From the University of Alaska Anchorage, this is Seawolf Voices, a podcast about the pathways to and from education. I'm your host, Matt Jarden. Last year, UA hockey was in a much more precarious place. One of three athletic programs slated for discontinuation due to drastic cuts to the University of Alaska System state-funded budget, Seawolf Hockey elicited support from Alaska to Washington, meeting its fundraising goal of $3 million to be reinstated in time for the 2022-2023 season. Now back on track, the UAA hockey team has a brand new head coach, one who may be familiar to followers of Anchorage hockey history alumnus Matt Chasby, who played 127 games as a Seawolf from 1999 to 2003 before playing pro hockey with the Alaska Aces. Off the ice, Chasby serves as Vice President of Player Development for the state of Alaska and has coached youth hockey at every age for the Anchorage Hockey Association, making the move to coach university student-athletes a natural progression. In this episode, Matt talks about his trajectory as a player, what he's learned from his hockey head coach predecessors, and how his experiences as a teacher influences his approach to coaching. Coach Matt Shasby, thanks for coming on to the show. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's my pleasure, and I'm looking forward to the conversation. You know, I can think of no better time to talk about hockey than right now, which is negative eight degrees in Anchorage. Yeah, this is this is a little bit cold for outdoor outdoor hockey, but the, the clear cold conditions sometimes are the best, and the outdoor ice is prime for sure. So you were announced as UAA's new hockey head coach back in October 2021. What have the last few months been like on the job, and what do you want to accomplish going forward? You know, the last the last couple of months have been uh, an incredible learning experience. Every single day, I'm learning something new, uh, whether it's related to. Uh, kind of the university system itself and just its daily operations and what I need to do in that area. And then also uh, just the hockey side of things, learning uh, the world of recruiting, learning the ins and outs of how to deal with prospective student athletes, and then going through the processes of uh, acquiring student athletes and then getting them signed up for the university and and everything it's going to take to get them enrolled here at UAA and then have them become uh, students here in the fall and we've actually been able to acquire two students that are going to be starting up in the spring semester and they're just going to be taking classes living on campus at the mac departments uh, and getting to experience being a seawolf right away and it's been been a lot of fun going through the processes with them Uh, and then moving forward here in the near future is just again acquiring uh, student athletes building our team for the fall uh, getting those students uh, signed up and ready to go for the fall and then um, also working on some other side projects with the potential rink seating expansion, uh, as well as uh, developing those relationships in the business community, uh, and as well as continuing the relationships in the youth hockey community, getting them excited about SeaWolf Hockey here come uh, next next September. For listeners like me who are mostly familiar with coaching through movies, what does your role as hockey head coach entail? Well, um, that's that was one of those million dollar questions of, of you apply to become the head hockey coach and exactly what you see it's bringing your dry erase board and drawing up drills and playing games and all that kind of stuff and that's you know that's a part of it uh, but I've learned very quickly that's a very small part of it. the player acquisition uh, is is a big piece for the recruiting and then going through the processes of compliance, making sure those players are NCAA eligible, that they've taken their required high school credits and and they're ready to play NCAA sports. And then it's getting them signed up off, getting that NLI signed or that uh, grant and aid signed and and getting through those processes. And then it's having them work through the application process, uh, the academic piece. Um, And so that's player acquisition, student athlete acquisition, Again, working daily in the the worlds of uh, reaching out to businesses and developing sponsorships and uh, developing new ways to uh, brand our our team within the community. Um, And so there's a business aspect to it. You're not a whole lot different than being a principal or being kind of a CEO of a company where you're having to wear multiple hats. Uh, And then we get a team on campus. Then there's the huge uh, developing the culture, developing the environment where our players can be successful in the classroom and successful on the ice. And then there's the daily and the weekly and the monthly management of your team. Uh, so you're, you're growing and you're 
developing as a team on and off the ice. And so, you know, that that's the fun part. That's going to be the rewarding part is watching that growth take place every day with each individual young man. Uh, and then as our team as a whole, on top of that is there's also, you have to work with your staff daily to be a group that offers everything that your students need to be successful, whether it's academically or it's on the ice. So again, there's many different hats and there's right now I'm kind of focusing on the recruiting piece as well as the, the business side of things uh, because we don't have student athletes, but we actually have two starting up this spring. So that'll be nice to get to work with those guys and get on the ice and, and get to where the coach had every, every once in a while. How did you come into the role as hockey head coach? You know, hockey's obviously been a huge part of my life and I've been, you know, it's always been a passion and desire of mine to uh, coach hockey at a high level. Obviously coaching hockey at the NCAA division one level is, is the ultimate goal, the ultimate dream. Uh, and I saw an opportunity where our program went through a time of an off COVID year uh, being presented with uh, shutting the program down. And then, participating in the uh, Save the Seawolves year and a half to, to raise those funds to for the program to be reinstated. Uh, and once the program is reinstated, I was just like, well, here's an opportunity to, to lead the program and, and the relaunch, the rebirth of a program that I've basically been a part of my entire life. And so I threw my name in the hat and it was kind of just worked through the processes. And I think at the end of the day, my passion for the program uh, spoke loud and clear in my understanding of the current climate uh, surrounding our team, surrounding our university, surrounding our community. It was also um, well represented in, in what I had to the soapbox that I kind of stood on and, and my understanding of what it's going to take for us to be successful. So um, again, it's always been a dream of mine to coach Seawolf hockey. And now that it's here and it's, it's reality, it's, you wake up every day and it's not a job for me. It's, to, it's, dream of a lifetime to be in this position. So, you know, I, I cherish every day of it and I don't take it for granted for sure. You have been involved in virtually every level of hockey, from administration to playing professionally to coaching kids and now university students. How do you adjust your performance for every aspect of hockey differently? You're right. I coached at everything from I was a mite director. So I was in charge of kids that were just learning to skate and then working through those younger processes to uh, high school hockey to you know, USA hockey at its highest levels, you know, and I felt like spending 12 years with every single age group of hockey player and really truly understanding the process and what it takes from beginning to end, beginning to becoming a college hockey player uh, is going to greatly benefit me. A lot of guys that are coaching at this higher level, they'll go from pro hockey or whatever level they're at and go straight into coaching college or pro. So you don't ever really spend the time of understanding what it takes for a kid to work through the skill development from learn to skate uh, to that highest level. And so I think having that understanding is, is very important. Wearing the administrative hat, whether it was uh, working for the state or is working within local associations or is working for USA hockey has been, I think, uh, added a lot to my, to be able to wear again, the different hats of this role um, and, and then be very flexible and, and understanding. And uh, I, also the last 12 years of working with youth hockey parents uh, is it was something that I think is, is very beneficial at this level too. If, if you've never gone through it, uh, and experienced it, you just don't really understand how much blood, sweat, and tears goes into uh, becoming an elite hockey player. And I feel I have a very strong understanding of that. And I think parents understand or have a feeling for that and that, I, that kind of feel their pain and what it takes and that I'm going to take their kids when they do get here to UAA and treat them as one of my own. And I think that's a big piece of the puzzle. You know, you're a hockey coach, but you're a lot more than that at this age that, you know, 18 to 24 is uh, you're, you're that home away from home father figure and mentor. And, and, and that's kind of the role I'm taking is, you know, being a, being a school teacher too, for 12 years, it's kind of the way I approach as being a coach as well as, you know, you, you have your curriculum, but at the end of the day, the most important uh, piece to the whole thing is the, those relationships with each individual athlete. Uh, and, and that's what that's when you're going to get the most out of those kids. And that's when you're going to get the most out of your program. It's 
is having good relationships with your, your student athletes and giving them everything they need to be successful. So having all those different, that background that I have of being a teacher, being an administrator, being a coach at various levels, I think are, are going to allow me to be successful at this level. How do you describe your coaching style? I'm somebody that shows up every day and again, approaches the game as a teacher. Um, it's my job. If I want them to be executing a certain system or a certain skill set, or I want them to be better at something is I have to teach that. I don't just expect kids to show up on campus and to be able to do everything I want them to do. And we're going to take an approach of individualized development. Uh, again, coming from the teaching world is everybody has different skills. Uh, everybody has different needs. And so we're going to address those different needs for each individual player with individualized development plans. Uh, and the more we can focus on each kid's weaknesses and develop them, again, uh, we'll make our team better as a whole. And if we have those players for four years and we work on those individual development needs, those four years, those kids are going to be dramatically better hockey players from year one to year four. Uh, and then we're going to be a dramatically better hockey team because those kids are developing. So taking a development approach at the college level is extremely important. And that's what we're going to do here. Uh, but at the same time, having very clear, honest expectations with the kids and, and being very, very truthful and, and making sure the kids can trust your word is, is the number one, is the number one relationship foundation for, for as a coach is, the number one thing you need and you have to establish right away is trust. And if the players can't trust you, then you don't have a locker room and you don't have players who are going to want to work for you and show up every day and get better. And so I'm somebody that kind of wears my heart on my sleeve and uh, the players understand what I expect from them and that they know that I care about them and I care that they're going to be successful. And that's how we're going to approach uh, our day-to-day -day relationship here. You are UAA's seventh hockey head coach, lucky number seven. What have you learned from your predecessors and what are some of the ways you plan to make the role your own? Yeah, there's, there's a lot of signs there because I wore number seven when I played here. So I'm the seventh head coach and it's the 41st year of the program. And when I played pro hockey here for the Aces, I was number 41. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of signs pointing in the direction it was meant to be. You know, you learn a lot from everything from your youth hockey coaches to the, the guys that had this job before I either played for, you know, I played for Talafus, I played for Hill. And then I was friends with Matt Thomas and Curly uh, that came after them. And then I know Bruce Christensen just because he's such a prominent hockey figure within the city of Anchorage and everything that he did before. So I have relationships with every guy that came before me, you know, and, and then Shyak as well. Uh, I've had many conversations over the years with Shyak too. So just kind of watching them over the years and the what made them successful and maybe what hindered their them from taking that next step uh, you, you try and learn from each of them but you know again at the end of the day it's just a matter of going with what i understand and what i think is going to provide us a positive culture a successful successful culture and and, and kind of going with that and leading with taking from what i've you know i've been in a lot of stops along the way as a player and we want i've won championships at a variety of different levels and pulling from those championship teams, I think is big. Uh, at the same time, having continued uh, conversations with guys in college hockey, and then also reaching out to those guys that came before me in this role is, is going to be important. And I think that's something too, as, as a division one coach and coach at this level is uh, you have to constantly, constantly be learning. And, and if there's something that I don't know, uh, reach out to those guys that came before me. But at the same, on top of that is constantly be in search of, of new information and, and making myself better every day too. So not just settling for other, other people's experiences and other people's knowledge of the past. It's continued to develop myself and, and be somebody that's a lifelong learner and, and trying to better myself every day. And, and, and reaching out to those guys before me is a big piece of that. What's it like to come back to UA and coach student athletes much like yourself? You know, I've, I've obviously still been coming into this rink coaching youth hockey, but to come into the rink and see my name on the wall and, and to know that, you know, I come into this office every day at the rink and it's, it's, it's the greatest privilege. And it's, a, you know, you wake up every day, just excited 
Like it, it's it's so it's so much fun. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I remember I remember making that choice to come back as a player, and kind of what a surreal experience that was. Uh, putting on the Sea Wolf jersey because you watched it your whole life, and uh, going to school here and walking into the you know the classes and being a student here uh, was a surreal experience for me. And now being the guy that is in charge of the program and, uh, and welcoming people to my, you know, to this campus, you know, to the dorms that I stayed at as a player, uh, stepping onto the same ice sheet that I did as a player. I'm extremely excited about it. I don't think there's anybody more excited about making more Seawolves and new Seawolves than I am uh, just because I know what it, what that experience was like because I've done it. And then understanding what this experience can do for a young man and, and take them into the next stages of their lives and what the university has to offer as through its uh, academics is exciting for me and, and watching players develop academically is probably I'm almost more excited for that than I am for the on ice portion is just to have conversations with kids about how their classes are going what they're studying uh, what they're excited about next semester's classes what they learned from this past semester's classes so uh, I'm really excited about that and so um, again being being somebody that has gone through it and now being uh, the leader of that program is it's an incredible opportunity and I, I can't wait for every conversation that has to do with uh, my student athletes in the university and their experience and making sure it's as the best as possible your level of involvement doesn't happen for someone who is only casually interested in something. So were you always into hockey? Yeah. I mean, I was, I was a kid that you're, you know, you're playing comp hockey. So you're skating five, four or five days a week, but I was a kid that would come home from school in elementary. And the second I would walk through the front door, I would chuck my backpack to the side. I'd grab my street hockey stick and ball. And then I'd be out in the street or in my driveway playing street hockey for two or three hours every day after school with my neighborhood buddies. And, you know, it, it's all I've ever did from I was six, seven years old. If I was awake and I wasn't doing something else, I was playing hockey. And so as I progressed, as I got older, I kind of always knew I wanted to coach someday. And so I was involved with hockey camps locally from about age 16 to 17 as then a coach working with younger kids. And I just kind of knew this is what I wanted to do. Uh, and then when I, as I worked my way through, you know, college, I still worked at camps during the summer. And then as I got into pro hockey, I started my own camp in the summer. Uh, so I was able to coach that way. And then when I was done playing pro hockey, I ran camps all summer long. And then when it came time for the season, then I'd be coaching three or four teams every winter. I would be putting in, 20, 25 hours a week to hockey on top of being a school teacher all day long. So, you know, it's, it's something that it's not, a, again, it's not a job to me. It's, it's fun because you're providing uh, an opportunity to young people uh, to participate in a sport, to be big, you know, part of something that is a lifelong uh, learning opportunity for those kids, character development for those kids. And I just love, love working with, with our community and, and, and watching it grow and be some part of something positive within your community and making it a better place. Are you from Alaska originally? I am. So I grew up out in Eagle River. I went to Chugiak for three years. And so my freshman, sophomore, and junior year as a Chugiak. And then my senior year, I went outside to play junior hockey. And then I played junior hockey for two years outside. And I decided to come home and, and play for our Seawolves. And it's just always, uh, it was always a call to come home and, and play for them. And, Got to fulfill that dream, and now <laughs> round two. So you earned your BA in history and later got your master's in secondary education to eventually become a teacher, which you did right after playing pro hockey. Were you always inspired to go into teaching? Yeah, I think that that falls into the category of, of having a desire at a young age to be a coach. And, and that's all teaching is, and that's all coaching is, just working with other people uh, and then watching the development and, and uh, and so I, that's always been a part of me. And I think teaching and coaching is, you know, they go hand in hand. Uh, they're not, they're not any different. And so in terms of the, the, the path of becoming a teacher, it was English, math, history, or the sciences. And history was, was always most appealing to me. And then you go through classes through junior high and middle school 
middle school and high school and you're like, being a social studies teacher is the best job in the world. And it was, and I never would have left it if not for uh, becoming the head coach here at UAA. Like I mentioned earlier, most of my knowledge about coaching comes from films. So I have to ask, what is your approach to giving inspirational speeches in the locker room or during halftime? No, I mean, obviously, I mean, being in, in coaching for 12 years and coaching older kids, I mean, that was that, you know, there's kind of those moments that you live for, you know, the pregame speech to, to your group. And then you go out and you watch them and they almost play the perfect hockey game and just it all comes together. Right. And so, and you even have experiences too, where you don't have to give a speech and, and your flex is the fact that you've done such a good job with the team throughout an entire year that you can just walk into the locker room and you don't have to say anything and you can just feel it. And then you just, and you can just walk out and you're like, we did our job. Like our coaching staff did our job. And then the team goes out and they dominate and you're just like, perfect. You know, so there's, there's different, different ways and different levels, but you know, I think my, my biggest moment I'm looking forward to is having the entire team sitting in the locker room next fall and having that first conversation with the whole group. Uh, it's something that runs, it's, it's odd. It, like before I go to bed at night, there's lines that are rolling through my head talking to the whole team. And now that we're starting to have players, like now I can picture faces in that locker room that I'm talking directly to. Uh, but I'm probably going to have that initial conversation running through my head for the next six months on repeat quite a bit. Is there anything from your time at UAA as a student athlete that sticks with you today? There's, um, you know, we had some pretty tough years while I was there in terms of our on ice, our on ice, um, performance and our on ice results. I think just learning from those time, those tough times and what it takes to persevere and kind of developing a, a strong mindset of not giving up and understanding what your ultimate goal is. And then making sure you have a, a healthy, positive mind in all areas of your life. Uh, whether it's, you know, if you're struggling in an individual class or you're struggling on the, on the rink or you're struggling as a team, is to find ways to make sure you stay positive and, and have good skills that allow you to, to maintain a positive mindset. And, and so I think going through some of those in college and then the challenges of the academics is uh, something I'm gonna work a lot with my players and my staff is, you know, we are gonna have to go through tough times, especially being an expansion college hockey team where you're, you're not supposed to win games right away. Like you're supposed to struggle while you're developing the program, but understanding that the most important thing we can do as a staff, the most important thing I can do is to have a steady hand and to stay positive and, and to make sure that my players understand that here's, here's our, my vision. Here's the end goal. This is what we're working towards. And uh, the ups and the downs are all part of it. And to make sure that we're all, we're all kind of marching together up the mountain. On that topic of perseverance, it's hard to talk about UAA hockey without acknowledging its recent reinstatement. What is it like coming into the role after such a precarious time? And is there anything you want to say to supporters of Seawolf hockey? I mean, that was, that was the big, you know, the big talk around town was who's crazy enough to take that job. <laughs> really, you know, the, the, challenges that lie ahead, whether it's the rank, whether it's the being an independent team, whether it's not having a team, whether it's uh, the travel that's involved and building a schedule and things like that is who's, you know, who's crazy enough to do it. And I, you know, I couldn't think of a, a more exciting opportunity than to um, take on all those challenges. Like, I think that's going to make us, makes the job that much more exciting for me is, all right, well, let's go take on any challenge head on and, and get after it and find a staff that is willing to take on those challenges and be excited about it for everybody that's in town is they have to have an understanding of what the real expectations are and what our one year goal is three year goal, five year goal, and that it's going to take time to get there. And it's going to take, you know, that we're going to have uh, some big moments, then we're going to have some setbacks, but to again, maintain the positivity and understand what we're trying to accomplish here. And what we're trying to accomplish here is providing an environment where our student athletes can be successful and then go on to become young professionals and leaders within our own community. That's number one. 
Uh, number two is provide an on ice product that our town enjoys and is willing to spend time and spend money and, and come be a part of our hockey program and be a part of something that represents your town and represents uh, is part of our town's identity. And is, you know, three is we are just a, a part of and representing our university in a way that are, makes our university proud. And that always isn't going to be wins and losses. It's participating in community events, making our community a better place and convincing people to come enroll in our university because we have all these amazing opportunities and getting our message across about our university locally. Uh, and it's about connecting businesses, connecting families, and, and just making our community feel like we're part of something, that you are a part of Seawolf Hockey. And being in the crowd and cheering us on is, is, is a huge piece of this puzzle, and it's a huge part of our program. You know, being a fan is is just as as big a part of this program as any 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 part of it is. So we're going to need that community support and that community engagement. And, uh, we're looking forward to developing all those relationships. Coach Shazby, thank you so much for joining me on the show. Absolutely, it's a pleasure, and uh, go see you Wolves. Seawolf Voices is a production of the University of Alaska Anchorage Office of Advancement and Alumni Relations.